Hello, and welcome back. I'll attempt to make a glass tuning fork today here on the Matt Yossa channel. And so I'm not sure how possible this one is. From all the examples I've seen, they're mostly made of metal. So I'm not sure if I'll get the same effect with glass. But I'm going to give it a try by bending this 7 millimeter rod into a U-bend. This will create the two prongs or tines of the tuning fork. If I was to hit the fork against a hard object, it should cause it to vibrate, which would then vibrate the air, producing sound. I'm also making a second tuning fork to test an experiment. I want to test the relative nature of this phenomena. If one of the forks is struck and begins to vibrate, will it be able to vibrate the other fork by just being in proximity? And so I'm attaching another 7 millimeter rod on to make the handle now. I'm trying my best not to overheat the U-bend and have the prongs come apart. This is actually kind of a difficult step seeing how thin the rods are. And these are looking pretty good. I'm going to put them in the kiln to dissolve any internal stress. I'm worried that that might interfere with the vibrations going through the rod. And now I'm bending up a 9 millimeter rod. I'll compare it to the 7 millimeter rod to see if they sound different. And so I actually haven't tested any of these yet. They're still in the kiln cooling down as I'm doing this video. But that's just the way some of these videos go. I don't wait for the test to be a success to make the video. Sometimes I make the video and then get a failed experiment, like what happened recently with the cobalt magnet. But then I do put a bit of knowledge and information into it. Speaking of information, or in this case, sound waves, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to compare them. Maybe with a guitar tuner? Or maybe I'll just play them one after the other at the end of the video. And so there's a few contributing factors which can make a difference in the frequency of the sound. Mainly what the material consists of, softer bendable metals are preferred, but then also the shape and size of the tuning fork. And so I thought I might try a few different colored glasses to see if I get different effects. I definitely noticed some differences when working with them. The clear glass, for example, will melt like water, whereas something like a darker cobalt blue may be a little bit stiffer, like a baking dough. And so that first color was Snow White from Glass Alchemy. White is a bit of a heat sensitive color, so you want to work it a little slower and farther out in the flame. The same with this cadmium orange, OJ, also from Glass Alchemy. Being made of cadmium, it has a slower melting point, so it begins to glow a little bit before the borosilicate. So it changes the rod to a temporary red. That's useful for a technique like this where you might need to track the heat if you're trying to make longer bends. And so one thing that is usually true in physics is a lot of operations or phenomena don't only run one way, but can also run backwards. So if you can set up the required conditions to create the desired effect, you should then be able to use that effect to recreate those conditions. And so if I was to strike the tuning fork, causing it to vibrate to create sound, then record that sound and play it back at the tuning fork at an amplified rate, that should cause it to begin to vibrate. 
And now this cadmium yellow is banana from Glass Alchemy. I'm trying a slightly different method this time. I'm gonna attach the rod first and then bend the prongs. I think it's always good to experiment with different methods. It helps to, to figure out what's working and what's not. And so we're about halfway through the video now. I wanna thank you for checking this out so far. I am hopeful we'll get some results. I did feel a little bit of vibrations as I was working on the pieces. But make sure you hit that subscribe button. You don't wanna miss the next episode coming up Friday. A ninja tool, probably as infamous as the ninja themselves. And that is a glass shuriken or a throwing star. I'll be attempting a completely different process than what I normally would do. I wanna to try to carve a mold for the shuriken out of a graphite plate. And I normally don't do molds, more just freehand sculpting, but I feel like this is an item that would have probably been mass produced, or at least would call for a more of a mass production kind of process. But I did change up the process for these green and blue tuning forks. I was bending one rod and then set it down to cool while I was working on another rod. This way when I attach the handle after it's cooled, I won't deform the U-bend as much. I'm also attaching them a little bit hotter than normal in an attempt to fully melt them in on the first attachment. I normally recommend going back in on the attachments to make sure they're fully melted in, especially if they're a structural element to your piece. This last amber color here is called Honey Badger. It's from Troutman Art Glass. It's kind of reminiscent of the old pill bottles or beer bottle. It's non-reactive, not very heat sensitive, and it melts a bit like butter. So it works very nicely. And now I'll put them in my kiln at 1050 Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. And here they are. They're looking very nice. The cadmiums are popping some bright color. The white one looks very special too. It's one of those colors that really stands out in a sculptural piece. But now it's time to run the test. And now for the last test, I was replaying the 9mm sound back at the tuning fork. And my hypothesis was correct. It began to vibrate the fork. I also tested other forks to make sure it just wasn't a general vibration from the speaker. And most of the other ones stayed very still. It was only the 9mm that really picked up and started going. I was even able to re-record the vibration I was picking up from the speaker from the tuning fork. And so now we're at the end of the video. I wanna thank you for watching. I thought it was some pretty cool results. I wasn't expecting that much sound. I'm still going over the data, trying to figure out everything. It seemed like the size of the fork made the biggest difference rather than the composition. Let me know what you think down in the comment section and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode here on the Matt Yasa channel.